we have Anju Saxena, Lars Boren, and Bernard Comrie presenting on Kanashi, a fieldwork pieces for a genealogical and contact linguistic puzzle. Okay, and since this one's a video, I won't call out a time warning, but I will have to pause at, at 20 minutes so we can move to questions. But um, if we're ready to go, I'll play it. Yeah, I think so. Thanks, Marianne. Kanashi is a Sino-Tibetan language spoken only in one village, Malana. People in the neighboring villages speak Indo-Aryan languages. Kanashi is interesting for several reasons. For example, how come this Sino-Tibetan language come to be spoken in this single village? And similarly, if we compare the linguistic structure of Kanashi with other related, uh, related Sino-Tibetan languages, we find that Kanashi is more similar to Kinauri as compared to other related languages of this region. In this presentation, we will discuss three such features in Kanashi and Kinnauri. They are the adaptive markers ang and as in borrowed Indo-Aryan nouns and adjectives. Second, perfective, one of the forms which is used to make the perfective verb stem is the reduplicated verb form. Third is the occurrence of the transitive marker ya and the intransitive marker ed in borrowed Indo-Aryan verbs in Kinauri and Kanashi. Other South Sino-Tibetan languages of Himachal also have Indo-Aryan loans, but these Sino-Tibetan languages differ from Kanashi and Kinauri strikingly in these regards. They, for example, do not have the adaptive markers on Indo-Aryan nouns and adjectives. However, some instances of phenomena one to three are found in some Sino-Tibetan Tibetan languages of Uttarakhand and Nepal. For example, Raji, Rongpo, Nevar, and Vyangsi. This of course raises questions such as how, when, and what do they tell us about the genealogical classification of Sino-Tibetan? In this presentation, we will first present some examples of the three phenomena in Kanashi and Kinnauri, and then examine these phenomena in other Sino-Tibetan languages, Indo-Aryan, Dravidian, and Austroasiatic, as well as two language isolates, in order to examine how widespread these phenomena are in the languages of this region and also what could possibly be seen as the source of these. But because of the time constraints, we will focus here only on the spread and distribution of these features in Sino-Tibetan languages. The languages that we have included in our investigation are as follows. So on this slide, we present lang Sino-Tibetan languages that are included. Here, have, here we have a list of Indo-Aryan languages included in the presentation. 
And here we have information about Dravidian languages, Austroasiatic language, and isolates. This map presents the geographical location of the languages that we have investigated for the present purposes. So now we begin with the first phenomenon, the occurrence of adaptive markers ang and as in borrowed Indo-Aryan nouns and adjectives. As we can see here, Kanashi and Kinauri use the same adaptive marker ang and as on a subset of Indo-Aryan nouns and adjectives. As we can see in the table, the word for village and country is desh or nagar in all languages except for bunan and they are Indo-Aryan nouns. Similarly, the word for thief in all languages, Kanashi, Kednauri, Tinani, Dharma, Rongpo, are Indo-Aryan loans. But it is only in Kanashi and Kednauri that we find an additional syllable. Ang in the case of village and as in the case of thief. And as we can see in this example, the distribution of ang and as is not morphologically, morphophonologically conditioned. Here are some more examples of the adaption marker as on Indo-Aryan nouns in Kanashi and Kinauri. As we have seen up until now, Kanashi and Kinauri are quite similar in their choice of the adapt adaptive marker. Either both languages take ang or both languages have us on one and the same noun. But there are also some instances where we find both ang and us as alternatives on the same item without any apparent change in meaning. For example, if we look at cooking utensils, so Kinnari allows both options with both ang and us. Similarly, for smooth plain land, Kanashi permits both padras and padring. Based on the data that we have, our hypothesis is that at some point, it seems that we had the distribution of ang and as were semantically based, where as occurred with animate nouns and ang with inanimate. A supporting argument for this hypothesis is, for example, in Kinauri, the place Kinaur is called Kinaurim, and the male person of the Sino-Tibetan Kinauri community is called Kanaures. Similarly, in Malana, the village name is referred to, the Malana, the village name is referred to as Malaning by Kanashi speakers. So the summary thus far is that Kanashi and Kirnauri show striking similarities in their adaptation of a number of borrowed Indo-Aryan nouns and adjectives. Now we want to see how widely spread this phenomena, phenomenon is. We begin with South Sino-Tibetan languages of Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh. 
we find this phenomenon in Sino-Tibetan linguistic varieties of Lower and Middle Kinnaur, which are also closely related to Kinnauri. But apart from that, Ang is attested in a handful of instances, for example, choring for theft, shikaring for hunter, for example. And there is one instance each of Ang in Navakat, in Bonan, and in Ladakhi. But if we come to the Sino-Tibetan languages of Uttarakhand and Nepal, we find more instances of Ang as the adaptive marker. In Dharma, Rangpo and Byangsi, there are there is a handful of nouns with the adaptive marker Ang. In Raji, it seems, this adaptive marker is a productive process, just as it or it is found in a large number of nouns. Some examples are provided here. And here, if we compare the Raji words for bone, dew, forest, and poison, we find the forms are very similar to those found in Kinauri and Kanashi. But in all these languages, we find the adaptive marker ang. The second adaptive marker as is found in yad, in jad, where we find both adapt forms with both padras and padrang, meaning the same flat plain surface. And there seems to be some instances of us in Dolka Nivar. For example, Vik, which is used in during religious ceremonies, we have Dupas. If we compare this form to the Nepali form or to the Hindi form, we get Dhup, that is the form without the adaptive marker. Among Austroasiatic Dravidian and Isolates, there are some examples of adaptive marker in Santali and in Kusunda. In Kuruk, as is a productive suffix indicating masculine human or masculine definite marker, and it occurs also on Indo-Aryan loans, for example, Choras, thief in Dhangar. If we go back to our Kinnauri Kanashi examples, we saw Choras, also meaning thief, also in Kinnauri and Kanashi. Among Indo-Aryan languages, it is found or attested in Kinnauri Pahari, which is spoken in the same region as Kinnauri. And our guess is that the nouns with the adaptive markers are a borrowing from Sino-Tibetan Kinnauri into Kinnauri Pahari. Apart from that, there are some Indo-Aryan languages where an or as or ang are attested. Gadi is one language where it seems to occur more often. So the summary, if we summarize our findings with regard to the adaptive marker as, we find that it is attested 
only in Kinnari, Kanashi, Jad, Dholkan, Nevar, and Kurok. And if we look at the distribution of the adaptive marker ang, we can classify our languages in three groups. The one where it occurs quite often, and in this group we have Kanashi, Kinnari, Raji. In the second group, we have Tina with a handful of examples, Tinan, Dharma, Rangpo, Byangsi, Kinnari, Bahari, and Gadi. And the third group is either they have no attested examples or just uh, one, two. So here we summarize our results of the adaptive marker ang in these languages. And language of the group one is indicated with language point, which is encircled and we find them in Himachal Pradesh, on the border of Uttarakhand, Nepal. Now we move on to the second phenomenon, that is perfective aspect marker and reduplication. In both Kanashi and Kinnauri, we have two sort of allomorphs of the perfective aspect marker. Is occurs with verb stems which end in ch or sh. In all other exam in all other verb stems, the final syllable of the verb stem is reduplicated. Example you can look at the example, the perfective form of drink is tung tung. But when the verb stem ends with a sh, for example, nash, we get the perfective aspect marker is. The perfective aspect marker can be followed by a copula auxiliary which carries the tense information. And this perfective, these perfective markers occur in spontaneous narratives, in direct speech, um, in direct elicited material, and also in traditional folk tales. Reduplicated Reduplication as a mean to indicate perfect or past tense or perfective aspect. We find no examples of that in Indo-Aryan, Dravidian languages, Austroasiatic or isolates. However, as was the case with the noun adaptive markers, there are some Sino-Tibetan languages of Uttarakhand and Nepal which show some traces of reduplication. So in Rangkas, Chodangsi and Byangsi, we have the reduplicated form of the verb to do followed by the copula auxiliary. In Raji, reduplication of the verb stem is used to indicate intensity, intensity and the author describes it that the reduplication is also used to convey the past tense. Reduplication occurs also in Kathmandu Nevar in narratives, but there it has the progressive aspect. So once again, we find some traces of reduplication, but it occurs among Sino-Tibetan languages in Uttarakhand and Nepal. 
Now to the last phenomenon that we are going to discuss and that is about transitive marker ya and the intransitive marker e or ed in borrowed Indo-Aryan verbs. These markers does do not normally occur in other Indo-Aryan languages or Sino-Tibetan languages. So here is an example of the transitive marker ya and intransitive marker ed. So we have the Indo-Aryan stem palt with ya it becomes the transitive form and when we have a in the same slot it is real it is it is realized as the intransitive verb form and we find the same phenomenon in kinnauri all right this is our 20 minute stopping point for this presentation and now we'll be moving to the I think, um, oh, sorry, Marion, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Why don't we just keep going, okay? So it's only four minutes left and... Okay, all right. Okay. Let's keep going. Thank you. All right. This ya a correspondence is not attested in Indo-Aryan languages in Dravidian, Austroasiatic, or isolate, and it is not attested in Sino-Tibetan languages of Himachal Pradesh. But once again, we find some plausible traces of this in some Sino-Tibetan languages of Uttarakhand and Nepal. So if we look at Rangpa, we, when we have intransitive form, so it is Babar, but that its corresponding transitive form contains a ya. Similarly, in Dolka Nevar, we have pull, which is a Indo-Aryan loan. Intransitive form contains an I, but the transitive form jal ya we have a ya form. If we combine the results of all three features, where number one is the adaptive marker ang as, reduplication two and ya a is indicated here as number three, we find that kanashi kinnauri Biangsi, Raji, and Nevar has exhibit all three features. And here we can see the geographical location of these languages. In this map, we have used red to indicate that a language has all three features. Usually, Kanashi, Kirnari, Byangsi, Chodangsi, Raji, and Nevar are classified in different subgroups. For example, in Widmer 2017, we have Byangsi which belongs to the eastern branch, whereas Kanashi and Kinari belong to the western branch. Similarly, in Thurgood 2017, we have Kanashi, Kinari belonging to the Kinari cluster, Biangsi belonging to the Almora cluster, and Raji unclassified, and Nevar subgroups and the similar kind of pattern is observed also in these classifications. Thus to conclude, 
The data presented here raise some important questions about the prehistory of these languages and the ge genealogical classification of Sino-Tibetan. Thank you. Thank you very much to our um, presenters. Um, I don't know if we have maybe time for a, a quick question here before people maybe want to get into a, another room. Um, we can maybe we can maybe take one. Any questions from anyone? Uh, I can ask a very quick question, which is probably um, gonna um, underlie my ignorance. None of the languages I work on, this is Christine Hildebrandt, um, do this. Uh, is this, is this ed um, at all? So I know Nepali has an E middle middle construction marker. Is um, is there is is there some kind of idea about that it bar that being borrowed or some kind of analogous modeling of, on E? Uh, you are talking about the transitive intransitive marker. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what yeah. to say about yeah. yeah. I have nothing yeah. to say about I yeah. I'm just wondering about it, the ed. Yeah, it's. Um, Indo-Aryan languages do that, so sometimes this rem reminds us of the Indo-Aryan intransitive for yeah. form, but that's just an accidental yeah. resemblance because in Indo-Aryan languages, we have a case of sort of umlaut, um, like torna to tutna torna type, yeah. break which whereas in Kinauri and Kanashi, this is a very regular phenomenon. And any Indo-Aryan verb that we take, we can add ya to it to make it transitive and, in, and replace ya with e to make it intransitive, irrespective mm -hmm. of what we do in Indo-Aryan languages. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hmm? You're welcome. So we would like to thank all of you who listened to the presentation. I know we had lots and lots of data. So if you come up with some questions or you come up with some data which might be of use to us, so please do get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anju. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. To everyone, and uh, that's, that's it, I believe, for this room um, for now, but we've got talks going on in rooms one and three. Thank you.